Okay, good morning all. This is Jasper Lawler, market analyst here, starting our weekly charting analysis webinar. Now I'm going to just give you a little time to, to look through our risk warning here. Now, what I thought um, might be a more interesting way of doing things today is that typically what I'll do is run through some of the overall fundamentals of the market and then look through the, the charts of some of the major markets that we cover the clients are interested in. Uh, today, I thought I would just go straight into the charts and try and cover the fundamentals and the technicals all together in one market. Obviously, towards the end, you know, some of these kind of global factors are going to affect multiple markets and it's not going to be necessary to repeat over and over, but I thought that might just be a bit more of an interesting way of doing it, and let's, uh, well, let's see how it works out. So I think probably where we'll start is I have my, um, my pages split up here in terms of asset class, and the first page I have is, is just the indices. So let's have a look at the, uh, the UK 100. Now this is the um, always good to, to flip onto the longer term chart and just see where we generally are. The market's generally being supported by this line at the moment. Obviously, there's different indicators that you can look at. But you can see that's pretty pretty nice lines. It's sort of five odd touches on the trend line here. So that's kind of supporting the general higher bias in prices. But what you can also see is that in May last year, we made this high close to 6,900. And we, even though we're hovering above this trend line, we really haven't got above it. And that 6,900 is a real tricky one for the FTSE, and it's, it's struggling at the moment with that. And we can see things in a bit more detail on the, the daily chart. Now, we've got this top trend line. What potentially could be worrying is that we, so we had three touches. That's quite a reliable line. This latest correction that we're seeing has not actually made it to that line. Now, perhaps if you draw the line differently, what you can actually draw is through the closes. You could argue it's, it's got a bit closer, but really, still not touched it. I personally like through the highs on this occasion the best. So that's what, you, what we could be seeing there is failure to reach the top of this, this range could be pointing towards a break of this lower trend line. Now, it has touched five times already, as we saw in that weekly chart. So, six times of touching, you know, it's, it's pushing how much support it can offer, and you could see a break there. Now, you may be wondering why is the FTSE doing this when, if we look at the, the Germany 30, you know, that made a, a new all-time high at 10,000 last week. We'll look at the chart of that next. But why is, uh, why is the FTSE not doing that? Well, paradoxically, it could be because the UK economy is actually doing the best. And so uh, it's expected to be the first G7 nation to raise interest rates. And, uh, you know, higher interest rates are, generally speaking, not good for stocks. Um, as you can all see, we've been in a major bull market for stocks, especially in America. Um, since the Federal Reserve in the U.S., the Bank of England, the ECB have been having rates at low low levels. Um, it makes investments cheaper, and it uh, makes re stocks relatively more attractive than other asset classes uh, versus bonds, for example, uh, where you're just not going to earn such a high interest, such a high rate. Um, interestingly, again, we'll, we'll look at the DAX chart for this, but. The DAX made new all-time highs in and around the time the ECB announced further monetary easing, whereas the Bank of England, uh, Governor Mark Carney, has come out and said that actually a, a rate hike in the UK may come sooner than market expectations. So, yeah, that's quite a stark contrast there. One is engaging in a new easing policy. The other is saying that tightening is going to happen, higher interest rates are going to happen quicker. So that could be a good part of the explanation as to why the FTSE has been underperforming. Another factor is the high concentration of mining stocks and the sort of recent underperformance of the Chinese economy. We can get into that a bit more 
in a minute as well. Um, technically, though, on this daily chart, what I've got is this sloping down RSI trend line here. And you can see that's kind of matched here, but we failed to, so far to get to this trend line again. And what we could be looking at is another further dip down here, possibly just to touch that low or possibly get down to a sort of oversold type level. So far, there's a few lines going on here. Um, what we've got is this rally, and we've seen a correction down to the 38.2% Fibonacci retracement. What we could be looking at is a touch down towards this high here and this consolidation area here, the, the top of it, which corresponds with a 50% retracement or perhaps more significantly, down to the 61.8% Fibonacci, and it coincides with the 200-day moving average and this rising trend line. So really, this is the kind of ultimate support that we're looking at, and that's obviously as prices go sideways, that's going to kind of drift higher towards this sort of 6, 650 type area. So that looks like a distinct possibility, especially if this candle for today closes out the way it's looking at the moment, perhaps a bit lower below the previous two days is uh, open, you know, that would be a bearish engulfing candlestick and that would be a good symbol fitting alongside this RSI of further weakness in the prices. It's obviously just below that 21 day moving average as well. If we dip down to the four hour chart, these are some lines to be paying attention to. So you can see this level here, the sort of 6775 type area, that's already kind of worked, where what we're looking at is here's, here's a swing high made there, breaks through it, touches down, so it's already, been, it's already worked once, moved higher, and then we fail to get above this high, hence this big move down, we've come and touched this level, which corresponds to this swing high here. Now, this level could work again, but typically they won't work twice these kind of small areas like this. And so then the next level we're looking down is back at this 38.2% retracement of that longer term rally. <clears throat> now the price is moving up here. If you have got a kind of bearish bias, this is looking at it the other way around. There's a breakthrough there. That breakthrough that level comes back, touches that level, bounces higher, comes down, and now we'll come back to that level again, which has kind of proved pivotal in these last couple of swings. So it could be there. That does leave us a bit exposed to the kind of risk up to here. So then what it potentially could be is back up to the the, um, the average here and the breakdown that occurred through this long tram, through this long candle. And really up and close near to these highs would be obviously be the safe area to enter any kind of shorts. Just in terms of a risk risk reward perspective, you could have a short stop above here somewhere. And then turn down. But there is a distinct risk this this pivot area could work again. Um, I've got some note here of a some lost sound. Um, could anyone else in the room confirm that they can still hear me? Just send a send a quick a quick chat through. Yep, can you hear me? Okay, good, good. Thanks, guys. Let's slip over to the DAX. Now, that's the daily chart. So again, have a look at this weekly chart. Slightly more bullish looking scenario than the FTSE, but again, a sort of nice trend line, giving us some kind of overall background to where we are. You've got to think that while we're above this trend line, we're not going to see thousands of point declines. You know, obviously, it's not possible staying above this trend line and seeing a multiple point decline. So entering short trades up here, um, you're just going against the trend, and there's no real confirmation the trend has reversed just yet. So obviously, it could work out perfectly if you pick the top, especially around these kind of round numbers like 10,000. That kind of stuff can work, but there's not really enough supporting evidence at this point. You know, uh, with the ECB supportive monetary policy, um, even though we're seeing some pretty weak data. For example, today we had the services and manufacturing PMIs out of France and Germany, both missed expectations. France has fallen back into contraction below the 50 level that you look for in these PMIs, and 
Germany looks like it's sort of plateauing a bit in terms of its growth. It's still expanding, uh, but just a few indicators suggesting it's slowing, slowing down. A big one, definitely I recommend you pay attention to for trading the DAX, uh, trading the, the Germany 30, and for trading the Euro tomorrow is the IFO survey. Because that's given us an idea of business sentiment. It's supposed to be forward-looking. And so, you know, if German, um, German companies are confident about the future, then that's going to be a good reading. I suspect it may slightly miss expectations, as, as this report did today. Certainly could be wrong there, but that would be in line with the sort of overall trend as to what's happening with German data. Obviously, there's always exceptions. Now, if we look, dig down to the details here, any of you that attended the last seminar, you would have known that I mentioned these levels before. Uh, basically, based on this, this is the kind of consolidation area. Now, arguable what kind of pattern you want to call this, um, sort of a triangle, um, but really more like a, in a greater context, you have a line down here as a kind of wedge. I just kind of said, well, whatever this kind of consolidation is, calling that below, and then this, this trend line looks pretty reliable. You know, one, two, three, four, five touches, break, touch back down again. So that is kind of the high. And then projecting from this area, <clears throat> what we got was a 50% area that was touched. Um, that coincided around the 10,000 level. Saw a few, yeah, kind of closed a bit above it, but yeah, it's worked quite well. Spike down here um, today, down to 38.2, and then back again. Now, obviously, Friday's candle is fairly bearish. You know, that's a uh, shooting star right there. Um, so, moved higher, closed back down below the level, and today we're seeing a kind of bearish action. But, picking up again, if we just draw in this level here, you can see it's kind of corresponded with a few kind of closes. The closes here drop down, close back up at it, above, now working again, corresponds with that kind of level. So that's working for the time being. This right where we are now, can't see it all in the day, let's flip down to the four hour. You can see this was the kind of sharp breakdown area from earlier today, and we're right back at it. You know, Theoretically, this would be a possible entry area, like, you know, looking at kind of risks up towards the top. But um, given the strength of this reversal, I'm not sure you'd want to be going short at this point in time. Um, you certainly could. Of course, you always can. But these kind of long wicks are generally showing some kind of aggressive buying up from these levels. Even though it's still quite a long bearish candlestick, that's not something you immediately want to go against. So a bit of caution warranted warranted there. It looks like, you know, obviously, as we were discussing, it's a long-term uptrend. So probably the bias is, you know, having bought down there, pushing up for a, um, a new high again, perhaps up to the 61.8% type level. Even though we did see this bearish candle, it's against the general context of things. We'll have to see how today's candlestick plays out. What might be the safer move? If it kind of closes lower down here again, then there isn't such an extreme reversal on the daily candlestick. That could get, you know, a close below the 21-day moving average could give us a bit more confidence that this is going to come down towards here and, and maybe break lower. Okay, doke. Let's flip over to. wrong with 30. Now, this is the the US 30. Kind of two trend lines to bear in mind here. Pretty strong, strongly rising market, as you, I think you'll all agree. And really, this, this bottom trend line is the main one we need to be concerned about. Now, the reason a few people are kind of, there's a lot of trepidation about going along the market right now is just because we're so far above this 200 week moving average and we're pretty far above the 200 day moving average and we're pretty far above this this main trend line here you know once you get a correction down towards here then you can sort of feel like it's a, a buying opportunity but while it's cramming right into the top 
you know, you've got obviously some downside risk all the way down to here, let alone anything larger. Now, the key line in the sand for a while had been this sort of 16,600, and then uh, just after that, 16, sort of 730 ish. Now, what I've done here is kind of similar to the other chart where we, this is a Fibonacci extension, just using this this rise and correction here. And you can see it sort of vaguely worked out. We've got this 161.8% level that's played off so far. And, um, you know, come back and corrected down to this high, no surprise, back up to the high again. So, you know, obviously with the benefit of hindsight, all some quite clear, kind of clear levels where it's, where it's been turning, this would obviously be an obvious level for it to turn again. Um, some kind of kind of short term double top, um, but Friday's candlestick's not really particularly indicative of that, and obviously we're going against this huge long term trend, so going short a little bit risky. What I had here in terms of potential buying levels would be a more aggressive area here, fitting alongside this 21 day moving average. Now you can see it corresponds to these highs here, and you've got a low here, which corresponds with a 50% retracement of this rally. And then we've got this peak here. So that corresponds with the 61.8% from that retracement. So if you were, if you did have some kind of bullish bias in the market and you weren't convinced this was going to be some kind of double top down towards here, Obviously, here would be kind of the lowest risk area, particularly if you're having a, a kind of stop in this kind of vicinity down here. But these are some potentials on the way up. Generally, the safer levels are where there's some kind of confluence. So here we do have confluences at both these levels. This one got the average, and it was quite a serious level. But arguably, it didn't quite make it down there than that first dip. So that, that, make, that could still work out. But in the U.S., obviously, fundamentally, um, we've got the Federal Reserve reiterating sort of easy monetary policy, and um, you know, especially in the face of rising inflation, which we can talk about a bit more. We we'll look at the, the Euro U.S. dollar chart where it really where it really counts. Um, they basically in the Fed they basically sort of maintained their guidance forward guidance for when interest rates might go, uh, might rise. They've not given an explicit date, but they've not really said it. they've not changed their rhetoric in their recent statements, uh, the one from last week, namely, um, to kind of help markets decide that actually a rate hike might come sooner or uh, or later. So. That said, in the context of higher inflation, it's almost like their policy has become even more easy, and that's something we can talk about a bit more when we look at this uh, gold chart, just because that's really one of the biggest reasons why we've seen this huge rally in gold. It's just because it almost seems like the Fed are ignoring potential higher inflation and, and keeping interest rates low, but that's been good for stocks, and uh, you know, that's kind of why we've seen this big rally here. So, in that kind of you know, in that context, of course, we can have some exogenous shocks from the likes of Iraq and Ukraine, um, but generally speaking, that's that's what's holding these markets up. It's just this really low guidance for, for interest rates from the from the U.S. Fed. Things to look out for this week. I would be paying most attention to the consumer confidence out tomorrow, and then the durable goods is out on Wednesday. Obviously, have a look at our uh, economic calendar and, uh, and just set yourself some alerts up for, for later in the week. This is the ISO tomorrow. Um, you probably want to be, um, yeah, I mean, looking at all of these, the future expectations as well as um, current conditions are both going to play into it. That's been a general theme for the ISO, actually, where they Consensus is that right now it's okay, but not so good for the future. Um, and then you can see the conference board, consumer confidence. Just set yourself an alert. That will pop up when it's happening, obviously. Now, let's have a, since I was just talking about gold, let's have a look at that.
this was probably the most fun market for trading last last week, given the the strength of the moves that we saw. Now, this is the kind of greater context of things: is that we've got this strong supportive level down about one one eighty. Um, so this move last week sort of implies like this is going to hold. So we've kind of broadly been in this 1,200 to 1,400 range. And so this action sort of implies that, well, that was the last place we touched. Uh, well, actually, 1,400 was the last place we touched. Uh, but it sort of looks like we're not we're not hitting 1,200 again. We're actually moving more towards 1,400. Now here's the move in a bit more detail. <clears throat> now, I was actually surprised that we didn't see it just a I mean, – generally quite positive on gold, um, given the kind of easy central bank policy. But I was surprised that given the height of this triangle pattern, how it's so well defined, that we didn't see a slightly larger move down to about 1225. I was sort of anticipating that around these kind of lows. But we haven't seen it, and that does show a lot of strength. And then this is obviously a brutal move higher that we saw on Thursday. And it's put us above these, these highs here. That's where we found a support for the moment, just to this sort of uh, 310 type area. Could see a bigger correction. I mean, gold is a volatile pair. It doesn't go up and down in a straight line. Um, so we could see a back move down to this kind of consolidation area, which is basically sort of either side of 1300. But 1295 is an area I'm looking at just um, where all these short candlesticks were taking place before this big drop off. And then, just with the sort of same idea that we've been using before, where this is the high break touch. So that that's that's a possibility. Um but you know, it's certainly a certainly a risky move I would suggest, even if you thought it was getting down to there, to actually short it down to there because we're just going against this strong momentum. Let's see if there's any detail to be had here. There you can just sort of see those kind of areas. I mean it's really there's not much to add support below there unless you're drawing some kind of Fibonacci or using these previous levels over here, which I think could could play out. Now with gold, um, <clears throat> obviously there's been, it was kind of boosted by two things last week, this kind of flight to safety um, because of the troubles in Iraq um, and the threat to, the, to oil prices. Uh, but I think more big of the point, as I was referencing before, is this U.S. Federal, uh, Federal Reserve policy sort of almost seemingly ignoring higher inflation in the U.S. Um, and keeping their guidance for interest rates low. And so that's, I think, going to be supportive for gold. Um, so we could see some kind of, you know, if things stabilize a bit in Iraq, we could see a drop off a bit. But I think, you know, this kind of move suggests that we're generally positive in gold. So it's, I would argue perhaps more of a buying on dips type setup than, than expecting a big sharp correction down lower again. But Obviously, it could um, could be wrong on that. Let's have a look at oil. That's obviously been the other big market. It's been making some big moves. We obviously trade Brent and crude. Um, this is the weekly chart. You can see it's quite significant where we've where we've broken from in this um, Iraqi crisis. Broken out of this real long term since March 2012 kind of triangle pattern that's, that's in place there. I, ideally, we would have broken more like over here, because this is about two-thirds of the way through. And we didn't, and we went right into the apex, which suggests probably the breakout is not going to be as large as it potentially could have been. But theoretically, we could see this whole height of this triangle projected up here to put us up to around, you know, 140, 150 even dollars a barrel. I, that's not my default scenario. And we're seeing this trend line kind of coming into effect today, cause the kind of drop off towards the end of last week and just seeing it come off again a bit today. And it's obviously overbought down at the 70 level on the weekly chart. Could provide us uh, an opportunity for buying in, expecting a break of that line. The obvious level would be these two highs over here, kind of generally corresponding with that, or possibly down as low as this. That to me would be the obvious point if we even get that, even if we even get that low. Um, 
I think, um, sort of fundamentally, with this whole situation in Iraq, I think what we're looking at is a sort of potential versus actual supply disruptions at the moment. The market's pricing the potential disruptions, and even though we're seeing these um, these Sunni militants making more and more progress towards getting towards Baghdad, we haven't actually seen the supply disruptions take place yet. So it might require the actual disruption of oil out of Iraq to see highest prices up and above 120 on, on Brent. WTI, similar looking situation. Here's the consolidation we had on the daily chart. Broke above this 105 level. Touched back down, which is kind of a good tr corrective move. You can zoom in a bit there. See, we've got a kind of doji slash hammer pattern off, the, off that former area. Now we're pushing into the highs again. WTI has not been quite as, as strong on a breakout as crude, and I think that just boils down to the fact that you've got these higher supplies um, coming, out, coming out of U.S. Obviously, U.S. producers own oil these days, and um, WTI is more reflective of conditions in, in the U.S., whereas Brent is more of a sort of global index for oil. Now, let's have a look at currencies. FYI, um, I haven't added any of these charts to the chart forum yet, but um, I will make sure to do so after the um, webinar. So if you've got your own charts, perfect, obviously, but that's the beauty of this platform is you can just use the uh, chart forum here and um, add some of these ideas, you know, just view the analysis and just uh, you know, just choose to keep it if, it if you feel it makes some sense to you. Let's have a look at the euro. Again, let's have a look at the weekly chart to give us that broader context. Now, we're still above. This has not really been confirmed, this trend line yet. It's just two touches, so it's not necessarily going to be that significant, but it is on a weekly chart, so it's something that people are clearly going to have this line drawn on their chart. Um, whether it proves enough to kind of halt this decline remains to be seen. But so far, We've been, we've been touching the top of the, the top line, so still suggestive that even though this top line's been kind of coming in a bit flat, we could still see another jump up to the top of the trend line again there. It's um, yeah, I mean this obviously the the rundown that we had from 140 down to 135, it's almost entirely at the hands of the ECB and the president Mario Draghi. Um, firstly, mentioning that they will likely do action at the June meeting and then actually carrying out some stimulus measures at the meeting. Um, it's a little bit questionable. Obviously, the intent is there from the central bank, but whether the actual measures themselves, the negative deposit rate, the sterilization of SMP purchases, of um, the kind of semi-QE semi that the bank does already, not offsetting that with other transactions. Um, they stop that program, and then there's an um, TLTRO, a sort of lo cheap loan to banks, but that doesn't take place till September. So it sort of looks like this, the actual effects on the market, on the European economy, if there is any ever, if there ever is any effect, um, are not taking a place just yet. And so we may see the euro hold above 130 for the time being, and, and it does correspond with this rising trend line that we've got, potentially. So we may see 135 acting as a base for the time being, and we saw that strong reversal there, and it hasn't made it through since. We'll back up to this reversal area, where we kind of broke through there, touch back on it, and what we could see if we do see a move higher back up to this breakdown area. This, I think, is maybe a bit too close to be relevant, although there was a lot of consolidation in this area. So that does fit in with the 137 round number. But since we didn't quite touch that then, it's, it's not going to be much of a gain above. I sort of feel like here would be a, another level to, for people to push it towards. And then should that fail, then we're actually looking you know, back towards this zone up here where we saw this sharp move lower off the top of that kind of wedge higher trend line. But for the time being, it is forming lower highs and lower lows. 
arguably this is a higher low if you count that as one and that's another so then a break above here would be a reversal of this this short term downtrend okay we're coming towards the end of the uh the webinar here um hopefully you've got a bit of time to cover the pound let's just have a look at a weekly chart not such a nice looking rising trend line possible on the chart on, on the pound through here I've, I've I've done it but it did kind of break through it and moved higher again anyway so that's quite a kind of bullish sign for the pound but um generally just moving higher because of the prospect of higher interest rates um so they, people move their current uh, move their their money into currencies to earn uh, the highest possible interest rate and and uh, potentially that could be the in the UK going forward if the Bank of England raise rates um, at the end of this year or maybe early next year. In terms of levels, 170 um, was where we banged into first. That's obviously a round number. And then 170.50 was this 14-year high. If we look back on the monthly chart, which I suppose I should have looked at, that corresponds with this. You, know, can, you can see this level is pretty massive. And it wouldn't be too surprising if we did see a big, large correction from here. But we did see a correction there. We've made it above there. So we'll have to see how this price action plays out. But a, a close for the week and then the month above 170.50 would be key. Short term, we've just got a few levels in here based on these highs and lows. And a potential... break of an RSI level here with a divergence possibly indicates off this 170.50 which is such a major level possibly we're going to see a, a breakdown probably the confirmation might come from a break of this kind of line here only two touches on it now but perhaps an idea that this RSI line is going to break lower okay um, I'm going to stop the recording now, and then um, should we have any questions, we can um, cover them after that.